everyone to some more Genshin Impact and today I'll be doing the big world quest in the new area which is Chenyu Vale and uh, yeah that's pretty much what I'll be doing today the big world quest called Chenyu's Blessings of Sunken Jade and uh, I did get this quest and uh Okay, so the description says, On first arriving at Chen Yu Vale, you are asked by the Adeptus, Fujin, to help investigate imbalances in the local water and soil. So yeah, I activated this quest by simply walking into the um, area of Chen Yu Vale, just like any part of it. And we met the this Adeptus lady named Fujin, and along with you know, helping with the investigation. She also gave us an ability that helps us uh, explore the region. So let's get started. And also the little icon of the area looks so nice. All right. And here we are, Shen Yu Vale. It looks so pretty. I was exploring um, some parts of it um, on my own, naturally, and it looks so pretty. Let's see, so we're going to Xiaoying Village? Also, I should probably mention, um, I'm not good at pronouncing Chinese words, so I apologize if I end up getting some of these wrong. So, um, just wanted to tell you guys that. Ah, <sighs> finally you're here! I is something the matter? Oh, are you... Young lady, are you the daughter of the Feiyun Commerce Guild's manager? Strange, all the rumors I heard spoke of a young master. Uh, nope. <laughs> We're here to investigate. Or, I am but a humble servant. The one beside me is, in fact, the real... <laughs> uh, We're here to investigate. Oh my, so you aren't a commerce guild, young lady. <sighs> my apologies. I was considering only your wondrously fashionable attire and your flying companion. Your conduct, too, was so unlike other, uh, unlike ours that I assumed that you must have come from Liyue Harbor to discuss matters with us. Lu, I am sure named, and all in the village call me Grandpa Lu. <sighs> apologize. I must... Recent years have not been kind. I have not even the tea to treat you to as guests. The Adepti will certainly not be satisfied with the tea ceremony this year. Huh? Uh, Grandpa Lou, the stuff right behind you. Aren't those tea leaves? <sighs> the quality is far too lacking. How could I possibly serve such things to my guests? <sighs> Speaking honestly, we are waiting for someone from the Feiyun Commerce Guild, for we must discuss with them the tea leaf problem. They are our biggest customers, after all. The crux of the matter is that this batch of tea is simply unsatisfactory, whether it be in terms of taste or quantity. This is an open secret among tea merchants. Old Luo the village chief has also decided that no tea may be sold until the quality problem is solved. I have heard tell that the young master of the commerce guild is exceptionally smart and skilled. If he has caught wind that this year's tea harvest was lacking in both quality and quantity, I thought he would come in person, or if not, send someone here. So, here I wait. Anyway, the problem with the tea leaves, I believe it lies with the soil. A problem with the soil? Indeed. 
I've lived here my whole life and worked with tea since I was but a wee lad, and I can notice problems that others may miss. As I see it, and may Adeptus Fujin bless us, it must be an imbalance in our soil and water. Adeptus Fujin? Oh, so you've also heard the tale. That's quite rare. Even among locals, few remember. Many, many years ago, Xiaoying Village was nothing but a barren hill. Terrifying demons dwelt there, and it was all thanks to Adeptus Fujin that the demons were defeated, and tea trees were planted, allowing our ancestors to come live here. But if it's really a problem with the water and soil, then I don't know what we can do about it. Actually, that's exactly what we've been asked to come investigate. Oh, so does that mean you believe me, young lady? Uh... Yes, I believe you. Is that so? Then that makes things easy. Come. I'll bring the tea leaf samples, and let's go have a talk with old Luo. Hmm... Something wrong, Grandpa Lu? Young ladies, if it isn't too much trouble, could you pretend you are from the Feiyun Commerce Guild when we are meeting with old Luo? Village Chief Luo is a good person, but how do I... how to put this? He puts more trust in machines cultivation techniques, fertilizers, and things like that. I mentioned an imbalance in the soil and water before, and we parted on bad terms. But if it was the young lady of the Feiyun Commerce Guild... Uh... Not sure if I can play that part. Uh... I guess... I'll give it a try? Doesn't seem like a good plan to Paimon. Ay, uh, don't worry. Even if he sees through it, it's nobody's idea but mine. None of the blame shall fall on you. Let's go. And we started the quest. Okay, go to the tea making workshop. Uh. Okay, uh. follow the uh, glitter trail. <laughs> Oh, look at this place. And it looks so pretty. A dog. Pet. Oh. There's a scratch here on the dog's head that looks like it was made by a cat's claws. Oh no! The cat attacked. Whichever cat it was. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, let's also get the teleport points. Because I didn't get some of them. <clears throat> oh, and also there's this new thing that you could collect. It's like this thing. Like right here. Let's see if we could get it before we go to our objective. I collected a few of these. Um, I'm not sure what it's for. Hmm, there's an animo symbol. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, a spirit carp. Yeah, right here. Um, a spirit carp formed from the condensed adeptal energy, swimming freely amidst mountains and river valleys. Yeah, I don't know what this is for. I'm guessing it might have to do with something that will become available later. Because, um... I saw it in the achievements that it says max out whatever this is, so... I'm guessing it's related to that. Anyways... Ah, over here. Uncle Luo, this batch still isn't any good. They're not fragrant 
fragrant enough when you dry them, and they get so dry and brittle that you can't even put them in the roller. Even the ones that survived the secondary processes come out the other end a complete disaster. Are you sure it isn't a problem with the machine? Are you sure you haven't forgotten how to operate it? What a thing to say! How could we dare to be careless, with you looking over our shoulders? <laughs> how could you indeed? Hiya, uh, it's Grandpa Lou! Jin, get back to work. And this respectable looking young miss is... Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, our options are... <laughs> I'm the young lady of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Or, I am but one who comes to the aid of the oppressed in their moment of need. A disciple of the Guhua. Guhua? Eh. Let's just pick this one. Hey! Just who the heck calls themselves young lady? This is my servant. It will suffice to call her Minnie Pie. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, that's it. Call me Minnie Pie. Oh, in that case, welcome, welcome. A guest like you is a rare treat indeed. We have been quite reliant on the assistance of the Commerce Guild for many a year. But as for what's happened this year, I suspect you have already heard about it. What's wrong? You're looking pretty miserable. Did Jin mess up at work again? Hm, you old... Mocking me again! Ahem, <clears throat> my apologies, dear guests. Normally, I would invite guests from afar to sample our new teas, but this year's batch... Well, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> the options. No tea? Are you seriously going to let me, the young lady? Or... No need to stand on ceremony, Chief Luo. We're here to help. Yeah! The young lady is very concerned about the tea leaves, so there's no need to be so tied up with formalities, Chief Luo. <laughs> uh, very well then. To tell the truth, this batch of tea leaves is no good either. They can't be dried, and I can't tell if they were bad when they were picked, or if it's a problem with the machine in our workshop. Huh. How's that difficult? Why not just use some of the older leaves you have in stock and see if the product you get from drying them is any different? If the product is normal, then you'll know it isn't a problem with the machine. Seriously, I've told you before. Forget it. As we have important guests present, then we'll give your method a try. Jin, do we have any fresh tea leaves remaining from older batches? There's some in the warehouses. What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, good one. We've been talking here for a good long while now, and you weren't listening to a single word, were you? <sighs> Go fetch some of the older batches and process it along with some of the newer stuff that Grandpa Lou brought using the machine. Don't you dare skip a single step. I'll be watching you. How about this? I see our two guests are quite young. They might prefer snacks to tea tasting. Why not turn these two batches into tea cakes? The quality of each will be evident with a single taste. What do you think, old Luo? Agreed, we'll do just that. Jin, listen up. Take these two batches of tea leaves and make them into two different tea cakes. One cake from each batch. Don't you dare get even a single leaf mixed up. Yes, sir, Uncle Luo. You want me to mix them all into one cake? Oh, for... I can't even. Hey, uh, sorry for the long wait. We've got both tea cakes here. Let's try them one at a time, shall we? Well, how's the taste? Hmm, the first one tasted a bit strange. 
But the second one was delicious. Uh, I agree. The tea cakes made from the tea we had in stock taste fine. <sighs> All right, you win. So according to you, the tea processing mach machinery is fine. In other words, the problem is with the tea itself. This new batch of tea, it's just not as good as before. So, the water and soil. But perhaps it's the cauldron that's the problem. It's old and in disrepair, which must have offended the Adeptus, causing the tea to deteriorate. No, no, it's the soil and the water. It's the elements that nourish the soil. The... Enough, enough! Let's get that technician in charge of the tea cauldron in here first. It's that Fontanian, the one from the Fontaine Research Institute. Hot, hot... What was it again? Uh, name's such a pain to pronounce. Jin, you'll get her, would... Jin? Jin? Ah, uh, just where did that lazy loafer abscond to this time? That brainless nitwit. I was going to have him go to Ye Yilong Wharf and search for our technician. Okay, ah, oh, my leg. Uh, okay, our options. What do you specifically need someone from Fontaine to fix it? About Yilong Wharf... Or, I'm an honorary senior researcher from the, Fo from the Fontaine Research Institute. I'm guessing this is naturally from doing the quest. Uh, hmm, but I don't want to click that. Uh, uh, let's ask about the, this location. The port to the west. <laughs> it's much smaller than Liue Harbor, huh? The specialties we export to Fontaine and Sumeru along with the oddities we import from them go through it. A whole lot of our tea is also transported through there. <sighs> Though this batch of tea leaves isn't any good, and until we figure out why and solve the problem, we won't sell anything to outsiders. The last thing we want to do is ruin Chao Yang Village's good name. So you see, honored guests. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I need to trouble you to go to Yilong Wharf and find our technician, Miss Oat Moon Tan Yi. It's more likely than not she's found herself a show there that she can't tear her eyes off. How could you possibly dare to ask our guests to do such a thing? Oh, Luo, you misunderstand me. Our honored guest already had business to attend to at Yilong Wharf, and it would just be passing along a message on their way. It's nothing, really. Is that so? Huh? Is that so? It would seem to be so. I'm truly sorry. Then, if you would, honored guests, old Luo, Lu, I'll leave it to you to accompany them. Oh. I, uh, thanks for your hard work. You scared old Luo so much he was jumping at his own shadow. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you're here to investigate the water and soil, right? Best you head over to Yilong Wharf then. It isn't far from the headwaters, and there are ruins left by the Adepti along the way. So if you're looking for clues, there's your best bet. As for passing a message to Old Moon Tai Yi, well, please lend a hand, would you? Give Old Luo some peace of mind, so he doesn't worry himself to death. <laughs> for the young lady, tis but a trifling matter. Hey! Why are you still acting? The show's over, and Paimon just realized, what's with Mini Pie anyway? Anyway, just leave it to us. You can rest easy, Grandpa Lou. Such great kids you are, really great kids. 
Oh, right. I noticed that you two really enjoyed the tea cake. Why don't I teach you the recipe? Next time you come by some quality tea leaves, you'll be able to make some for yourselves. In any case, safe travels. Be careful in Mountain Pass, and mind you don't slip. Ooh, recipe. Fine tea full moon. I'll make, uh, those later. Okay, so... Okay, so we just have to leave the village. Oh yeah, we could technically collect some of these, too. And, uh, these can be used, uh, for, like, making the recipes, so... Okay, I'm not gonna do this the whole time, obviously. I'm just, like, collecting a few. Okay, let's go. Oh! Golden carp. I forgot to get the one thing. It was on the map right here. I'll get it later. Yeah, so this is how it works. Once we attack. Shake it and stir! Okay. Ah. We're open! One with nature! Done. Okay, so this puzzle was... Oh, oh, wait, first. So I get this, and I have to make sure all these are lit. Oh. Yeah, this time it's pretty easy. Well, this one. Ah, here's the lady. <laughs> Aya, Paimon, you two are indeed brilliant, as expected. Upon seeing my dissipated adeptal energy, you immediately understood the situation. Of course! We're super duper experienced adventurers, you know. Still, why didn't you say anything sooner? You didn't just forget, did you? Uh... Ahem. <clears throat> About that. Should not the path of the Adepti be full of challenges? Tis merely a test of your wisdom. Uh, call me the Master Test Taker. Or, it was you who brought us here. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of which, just what's the problem with the soil and water you mentioned before? Grandpa Lu was also sure that this was behind the deteriorating quality of the tea leaves. Yes, you too have seen Chao Ying Village. Should the quality and quantity of tea leaves continue to decline, so will the village. Until finally, in the years to come, it degenerates back into what it was millennia before. A desolate mountain forest. Uh, you sure that that isn't hyperbole? Or... I understand what you mean. Uh, that's kinda hard to wrap your brain around. Can bad tea really destroy... Chao Ying Village? <laughs> it is true. The Lord of Jia would not stand idly by as disaster befell. Were the sky to collapse, the conqueror of demons and other adepti would do their utmost to support it. Should the waters under Yilong Wharf breach the, di the dikes and flood, Liyue Harbor would aid the villagers. But without tea, this stretch of mountains would, or Chao Ying Village, rather, would lose its very reason to exist in human eyes. Makes sense. When you put it like that, Paimon understands. So, 
Are you too willing to help me correct the imbalance in the water and soil? Uh, very well. Yes, that's excellent! Ahem, <clears throat> your willingness is commendable, and one is quite grateful to you both. Now, back to business. When it comes to how to resolve the disharmony in the soil and water, one is indeed well aware of what to do. First, you two must go up against the cur currents and seek the jade treasures thrown into the waters. In the end, we must perform the ancient rain jade rite once more, dispelling the miasma that has settled over the mountains and fields and into the rivers, and restoring the water veins and soil. Okay, got it. But, uh, just how do we do the ritual? Uh... Adeptus Fujin, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. As for the ritual, it's still a bit early for that. Well then, we'll see each other later. Oh. And she's gone. According to her, we need to go against the current. That just means upstream, right? Hey, that's the same direction as Yilong Wharf. Let's go! Oh, someone's watching. Can we get the chest? I'll keep this close. Oh gosh, mouse. Oh, there's so much. Okay, let's keep going. I can collect more of those spirit carps, uh, later. This one on the map right now. Oh yeah, this one wasn't originally on the map. I did one of the world quests already. Um, while I was exploring around. And, uh, yeah, th I got that one from that one world quest I did. <laughs> oh. Uh... Okay, let's go this way. There's so much to explore, but I don't want to do too much right now since I want to focus on the story. Okay, we'll do... we'll get this one over here. The wind's melting. Fire it up! Okay. Precious chest. Is this an answer from this world? Okay, where are we going? Okay, this way. I'll take the long way. So we can explore the area. There's something... Fire it up! What does this do? Uh, oh gosh. Ah! Uh, okay. Um... Okay, I don't know what to do here. I'll worry about it later.
Yeah, I don't know what to do with that. I'll just do... I'll just focus on whatever that's about later. Let's keep going. Common chests like scattered around in Chinny Vale that are just like it's like they're in plain sight, but you wouldn't notice unless you're paying attention. Alright, let's keep going. We're almost there. going to take so many screenshots when I have the time later. It, like, there's so many places in this new region that are definitely good, like, for taking pictures. <laughs> okay, it's not an actual seating. Here we are. So we're going. Well, it tells us. But yeah, search for the Fontanian technician. So I don't understand it in the least. I still think it's amazing. Just watching her stand there singing, or sing while walking around, or sing while sitting, and then sing while she lifts her hand and slowly lets it fall. All the while ceaselessly singing. What? <laughs> I really don't know just what kind of magical powers the old lady has. Babbling, chanting, singing, and reciting, reciting, and crying. I haven't got a clue what she's saying, but it's amazing. Little Mal, can you understand? <laughs> That's just how opera singing is. And weren't there fighting scenes later? Uh, there was that old dude who could do 88 flips and tricks. Riveting stuff. I am confused. Yeah, it's great. It's just a shame that I don't understand the thing. A whole bunch of people fighting and jumping all over the place, all super flashy and such. One on one, several all fighting each other, five or six taking turns. It's just almost addictive. Hello! We're looking for a technician from Fontaine. Jeep Luo and Grandpa Lou said... Uh, what name did they give us? Old Moon Tan Yi. <laughs> yep, sounds like Grandpa Lou sent you all right. Just call me Old Moon Tan Yi. I'm a researcher from the Fo Fontaine Research Institute. Uh... Oh my gosh, <laughs> what are these options? <laughs> okay, our first one is, <laughs> I'm the young lady of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. I am but one who, who comes to the aid of the oppressed in their moment of need, a disciple of the Guhua. What? I'll have you know that I'm an honorary senior researcher. Uh, okay. <laughs> I got my shoulder, ow. Um... I'll say the last one since we did do the quest. <laughs> Seriously? Is this really the moment to be comparing? Anyway, she's Aya and Paimon's Paimon. It was Grandpa Lou who sent us looking for you. <laughs> uh, so you're colleagues from the Institute? Excellent. Looks like you guys couldn't stand that hopeless wreck of an organization either. Miss Aya, Miss Paimon, hello. I'm Little Mal, a friend of mountains. Yes, that's what my name means. Haute Montagne can be a bit hard to pronounce, so I asked Little Mal to just call me that. Really? Quite the interesting pair. How did you two meet? 
It was quite fortuitous. Last year, I went to the mountains in the south for a spell and got lost in the fog. A huge beast the size of a cow, Etienne Louis, was glaring at me and I thought I was done for. But just then, a little kid suddenly shouted at me. I followed the sound through the mist and got out and was saved. Otherwise, I would have been eaten, just like that. And my family in Fontaine wouldn't even have been able to claim compensation on my account. <laughs> I know more about what goes on in the mountains than the grown-ups. Is that so? You're amazing, little Mal. Haute Montagne, uh, Grandpa Lou and Chief Lou are looking for you. We're here about the tea cauldron in Chaoying Village. Alright, got it. I'll be there in a jiffy. <sighs> All the shows here are just too good. I ended up watching several, one right after the other, and now my legs have fallen asleep. But I just can't understand the word. What sorts of stories are they telling? It's about how way back when, a huge carp and a monster from the mountains fought. A, uh, you kill me, I kill you story. In the end, everyone dies. Uh, that's a pretty concise summary. But don't talk about killing and dying so much, little Mal. If you think about that kind of stuff too often, you might become the villain when you grow up. Since those in Chaoying Village are waiting for me, it's time to go. See you all later. Let's go watch the shows here again when you're about to head back to Fontaine. Okay, now that we've solved the puzzle, we can get back to business. Little Mal, how about you? What are you two going to do? Huh? To be honest, we're not quite sure how to explain it. The water and soil in Chinyu Vale are kinda out of whack. And we need to cure them for everything in Chinyu Vale to get better. I get it. Miss Paimon is trying to say that we need to restore nature? Hey, that's right. You're really amazing, little Mal. You got it right away. Restoring nature, you say? Did someone talk to you about that? That's right. A friend who's always taking care of me told me. She wants to restore nature too. If we restore nature, everything will get better. So I want to help too. She also told me about you two. Oh, so you've seen her too? Huh? You mean my friend? Of course. Silly, Miss Paimon, how could we be friends if I'd never seen her? Fair point. That makes things easier. Actually, we want to... Uh... Paimon remembers we need to find the jade treasures in the water, and then do some rain jade right. But even though we've come upstream, we still haven't found any clues. Ah, I know. Come with me. I'll show you where to look. What? Is it really that easy? Little Mal, your friend wants to restore nature, right? Yeah, she's told me a lot. Such as stories from before Chaoying Village became Chaoying Village, how the tea trees came to be, and more. She said that things will get worse and worse in Chen Yu Vale if the natural order isn't restored. Oh, looks like we're on the same page then. Little Mal, you just said you knew where we could find leads, right? Yeah, I don't know if it'll help, but when you mentioned jade treasures and rain jade and stuff, I just thought of it. Come with me. Yep, let's go. Alright. Okay, follow Little Mal. Um, apparently down here. Are these? Oh, a lot of them too. Oh, elevator. 
Ooh. Okay, let's take the elevator down. Look around. Admire the view. Oh wait, not that way. Oh, over there. Okay. Okay, try entering the waterfall. That okay, use the uh, depthal energy, I guess. Oh, there's a rock here. Let's go break it. Oh, oh, okay. It looks like we can explore this place now. Okay, let's see. Reward on the road. Oh. Hmm. This is it. It's the clue I wanted to show you before, right here. we came here. No need to worry, little Mal. It's so humid here that it's no wonder there's moss growing everywhere. Hmm, there must be a way to clear it away. Clean the mural. Oh. Ooh. Look, Aya, look! It's a scene of ancient people attending a festival and performing a ritual. Pretty different from the festivals we have today, huh? Although the grown-ups in the city and the village all say that the Lord of Geo was the first to arrive in Chen Yu Vale, I've heard that the people in the picture actually got here even earlier than he did. People back then used to throw bits of magic jade into the river, and they'd float along until they sank to the bottom. They saw it as a way to guarantee good weather, prevent the river from flooding, and ensure that soil would be fertile. Based on what we previously discussed, I'm guessing that Chen Yu Vale will only be fixed after we found some jade that was thrown into the river in ancient times. That makes sense, doesn't it? Wow, you're so knowledgeable! Was your friend also the one who told you these stories? You real little Mal, that's first class guide material right there. These legends are fascinating. Yep, and everyone will be really blessed and live ha happily ever after and all that. <laughs> uh, but I much prefer hearing her stories about ancient wars and battles. She told me that the warriors back then were all giants who were over 10 feet tall. The warriors of Chenyu Vale were covered in tattoos, and they had these massive jade axes that could chop a person in half in the blink of an eye. 
and the Milalites, led by none other than the Lord of Geo himself, were even tougher. They clad themselves in suits of armor that weigh over a thousand pounds and fought with hundred pound spears. Apparently, everyone was at war back then, so much so that Bishui, Bishui River to, turned crimson red. Later on, the mountains to the south became full of ghosts from that era. Even now, those who wander through the mountains might still be able to catch their singing on the wind. Eh. Uh, yikes, scary stuff. Cover your ears, Minnie Pie. I don't think these stories are meant for kids. Yeah, it sounds terrifying. Old Montagne is right. You shouldn't dwell on this stuff all the time. <laughs> There's no way grown-ups would tell us these stories. They always say we're too young to hear them, that they'll turn us rotten and stuff like that. But I'm old enough already. Hearing a story's not going to turn me into a monster. Besides, there aren't many adults still around who know these stories anyway. If my friend hadn't told me, I wouldn't even have known the stories about this picture. Okay, fine then. Guess we'll move on. So, the grown-ups were right to say that those ancient people threw the jade into the river from somewhere up, somewhere high up. But where exactly? And where did all the jade float off to? Uh, well, it must have sunk to the bottom, right? It's not that simple. If it was thrown in somewhere up river, and even if it sank to the bottom, it would still be pushed down river by the current let alone after so many years. Besides, I've never heard talk of any ancient ritual jade before being found upriver. Chenyu Vale is a small place, after all. If there had been such rumors, everyone would already know about them. <laughs> you know so much. You're a future scholar material, for sure. <laughs> but what if I don't want to be a scholar? They don't earn much more, uh, and it sounds like no fun. Then become a traveler, just like us. What could be more fun than adventuring around the world? Hmm... Seeing as we now know the site of the rain jade right, what should we do next? Uh... Why don't we go somewhere high up to take a look? Let's observe how the river flows. If we want to see how the river flows... Maybe it would be a good idea to try the tall watchtower over at, at Yilong Wharf? <laughs> You're a clever one, Miss Paimon. <laughs> of course! Uh, okay, let's head out. Or, I want to take another look around. I do want to look around real quick. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Just want to... So I want to check something. Ugh, what's this over here? Can I... No! Can't move this thing closer. I'm just trying to push the this thing over here. <laughs> don't mind me. I don't think this works. Okay, it won't work. Um. Okay, I tried. <laughs> okay, now I have to move this back. You know what? I'll worry about this later. <laughs> We could go back here anyway, so I'll do it later. I'm lazy to switch uh, party members right now. Shall we go? I. All right then. Okay, here we are. Look, 
From up here, you can clearly see how the river moves faster through those narrows, then slows down again as the river widens out. The trade must have stopped there. We should find what we're looking for there. Wow, you're such a real whiz kid. I must been wondering though, what's that massive thing in the distance? That huge thing is the Jade Mouth, a legendary jade ring that an adeptus threw into the water. Oh, but the river curves around there, so the current should actually speed up. But the river gradually gets wider there. Yeah, so the rapid flow around the bend might have resulted in things being deposited along the convex bank when it, where, where it widens. So there, there's actually a good chance that the jade is at the bottom of the river somewhere around Jade Mouth. Of course, that's assuming that the course of the river hasn't been artificially altered. Hmm, not to mention, there's a fisherman's legend that goes something like Jade shall rise from sunken mouth, or something like that. Anyway, let's go over and take a look around first. Compared to little Mal, Paimon feels like she's completely out of her depth. <laughs> it's because my friend is amazing. She knows everything there is to know about the mountains, and she's taught me loads too. That's how I've learned so much. Uh, well, these options. Um, don't worry too much about it, Paimon. Yeah, that's right. Paimon has lots of other strengths. Whatever the case, let's go down and get on a bamboo raft. Oh, yeah! Jade Mouse, here we come! Okay, board the bamboo raft and go to the Jade Mouse. Okay. Also get more of these. That's it. There we go. Wanna collect the those uh, tea leaves. Something over there. Okay, let me do this first. Okay, I think that's a puzzle, so I'll just worry about that later. There you go. Alright. Someone coming abroad? Wait, is that little Mal? Come, come, I'll take you. Okay. All right, Boatman, take us to the Jade Mouth. All right, Jade Mouth it is. The other two, you're tourists? <laughs> well, if you're here for sightseeing, there's not many locals who head that way. <laughs> you could say that. Mr. Boatman, are there any stories about the Jade Mouth that I haven't heard before? Knowing you and how much you love your stories, kiddo, you must have heard them all by now. Tell me more, tell me more! Alright then. Well, I've heard it mentioned that the Jade Mouth was left behind by Rex Lapis when he marched through here to save the people of Chen Yu Vale. Legend has it that, to prevent a naval advance from downstream, the local adepti... You're making it up as you go again, Gramps! There's no way that Lia's navy came up this river. I've heard that the Jade Mouth was formed by a piece of jade left behind by a giant carp. In those days, a batty god tried to redirect the river to drown the Millilis stationed on both of the banks in Chenny Vale, but a giant white snake and a giant carp who were here, her subordinates disobeyed her orders. The giant white snake held up the batty god while the giant carp she threw the jades she wore here. The jades pinned the river down, and ever since, we've had no more floods, and everyone can live peaceful lives on both sides of the river. Heh, <laughs> you might understand a lot, kiddo, but you haven't seen much. Take a closer look. 
there aren't any crops by this river. See, after it was pinned down by the jades, it's true that the river hasn't flooded, but that's also meant it hasn't been able to provide irrigation for crops. So what was once a wide, gently flowing river is today a narrow, rapid flowing torrent instead. Such a river leaves no sustenance for the earth on its banks. <laughs> and of course, that also means no people living peaceful lives on both its sides. Paimon gets it now, but did you just say that the Adepti were resisting the Lord of Geo, little Mal? That's how it was all that time ago. Some people believe that the first Lord of all Liyue was Rex Lapis, but in Chenyu Vale, we believe that before he came, there were other gods in Adepti who protected our ancestors. I've heard Grandpa Lu say that the tea ceremony is actually for the carp Adeptus who planted our first tea tree. Oh, but aren't these Adepti meant to be the baddies? They were serving under a baddie god after all. In some stories, they're the baddies, while in others, they're the goodies. But it was all such a long, long time ago. Even the grown-ups don't remember much, so they always try to bluff me. Heh, <sighs> talking about that friend of yours again. <sighs> How can such supernatural beings be held to our simple codes of right and wrong? As far as we're concerned, all the forces that have ever blessed and protected this land deserve our offerings. Eh, there you go again. Hmm. Alright then, time to get off. We're here. Thanks, Gramps. We're in Jade Mouth. Okay, also I did get to teleport. Where am I going? Jade underwater. Ah, so that's how it is. The spring's cries ripple through the vales. Vales. The shrines depart from northeast shores. The heights and shallows in the southwest high, sun and earth from each other divide. The eternal whirlpool that never churns, the beautiful jade concealed within. Little mouse singing about. It sounds pretty complicated. It's one of our local folk songs. I heard an old granny singing it as she was gathering herbs. It means if you look out from the center of the river to the banks on either side, you'll see two stone shrines hidden to the northeast and the southwest. These shrines keep the mighty whirlpool in the center suppressed. Paimon understood the last bit. So the jade is all hidden beneath the whirlpool? Yep, sounds like we're going treasure hunting. Hooray! But the area between the northeast and southwest is so huge. After all, in a broad sense, the northeast and southwest of Jade Mouth can include pretty much the whole world. You're always thinking outside the box, Miss Paimon, but there's no need to worry. I already have an idea where the shrines will be. Because, well, my friend told me. Come on, let's roll. Um, I have a question. Does anyone else think a giant maelstorm suddenly appearing here might not be too great? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that mean that boats will no longer be able to sail in and out of Yilong Wharf? Oh, don't worry about that. My friend told me that once we've done what we need to, to beneath, the whirlpool will disappear completely. Otherwise, how will... How would all the old boatmen carry on making a living? Wow! So it's not 
Orange is a smart whirlpool, but a considerate one to boot. Let's get going then. Okay, let's investigate the stone shrine. Oh, some treasure hoarders. Into the wind. Take that. Die for hunters. Because. Test subject. So, Curry. Can try. One with nature. Don't get too close. Take that. Test subject. Breathe. Into the wind. Replace my hands. Okay. Someone snoops. The spirit's cries ripple through the vales. Vales. The shrines depart from northeast shores. The heights and shallows in the southwest hide sun and earth. From each other divide the eternal whirlpool that never churns. We have found the two shrines the legend speaks of, and it seems they, too, are related to our ancestors in the mountains. But the meaning of the folk song mentioned above remains unclear. We don't have a clue what to do here. We're just running around like headless chickens. Everyone got really worked up when they heard our comrades ev excavating and shipping antiques already made Big Mora. Who knows how much longer we'll have to stick around here. I'll keep this close. I want to get these things. Point. Let's get that real quick. glowing between the pearls. Oh! More like inside the pearl. Cause I can see it like glowing inside there. Alright. So... Oh, I know how to do these, I think. Wait, what's this? There you go. That's how it works. Um, oh, right. Press the button. Is this an answer from this world? Alright. Oh. Hmm. Huh. We haven't seen the whirlpool from the song yet. What should we do next? How about 
giving that adeptal energy of yours to try, Aya. Try using the... Oh. Okay. so pretty. Jump into the whirlpool. Alright. <sighs> Should be careful. A golden carp again. So I'm gonna collect these since they're scattered around. There's a chest here. Oh, of course. I know, put the rocks there. One with nature. Fire it up. Lightning flash! Time to randomly level a random artifact. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of it anyway, so I'll just like pick one. I'll just pick one of these and just level it so I could get my inventory cleared. Oops, I forgot it. Is this just so I could have space again? <laughs> Enough space? Okay, that's enough. Okay. There you go. Did not realize it was close to the limit. Okay, before we follow, I just want to make sure of things. Right. Oh gosh. Oh, I thought I missed something. Paimon, we meet again. And who might this be? Huh? You haven't met before? This is little Mal. He's helped us so much along the way. No, we haven't met before. But you must be a good child, little Mal. Hello. And yes, that's me. Miss, are you an Adeptus? You are, aren't you? This is Adeptus Fujin. <laughs> Thanks for all the help you've given Aya and Paimon, little Mal. It's really the legendary Fujin in the flesh. I can't believe this. I've heard so many stories about you, and now I know that you're not some kind of big, slippery carp, but a lady instead, like a big sister. A big carp? Honestly, what kind of stories have you been listening to, little Mal? Ahem. <laughs> 
one is indeed an adeptus, and as such, can take forms as one pleases. This particular form seemed like the most approachable one for conversing with humans. Hmm, from what you've said, you have a, uni a very unique scent, little Mal. Have you met someone in the mountains before? Someone with red eyes and a fair complexion, perhaps? Uh, not exactly. Big Sis Fujin, you're not talking about one of your other friends, are you? My friend is from the mountains. My friend from the mountains doesn't sparkle like you do, but she's also really cool. She's helped me tons and taught me loads. So it was her after all. So your friend wasn't Adeptus Fujin after all, huh? But Big Sis Fujin's my friend too now, isn't she? Of course, little Mel. I am delighted to have made friends with you. Uh, way to go, little Mel. You've now met two Adepti. Little Mouse met other Adepti? As for whether little Mel's friend counts as an Adeptus or not, hmm, I'm not sure myself. After all, Adeptus is merely a title. And it's hard to say whether Adepti are, are even people. The word Adeptus is just like any other word, such as hero, villain, or idiot. No one is born an Adeptus, and no one shall remain an Adeptus forever. That's true. So you've met that friend of Little Mouse that we were talking about, right? Indeed. But it's been a long, long time since I last saw her. So now, I suspect I don't know her half as well as little Mal does. I'm not even sure if I still count her as a friend. According to what little Mal said, uh, his friend wants to restore nature. I would imagine so. Anyway, I must ask you all to please take this piece of votive rain jade. I had originally hoped it might remain here, the same as it ever was, but I never expected it to grow quite so large. <sighs> I used to love it so. This rain jade that you just mentioned, did it rain down or make it rain or something? <laughs> of course not. After the great changes in our geo geology, our, uh, the ancestors of the people at Chen Yu Vale lost their ability to communicate with the heavens and lost the guidance of emissaries whose beauty was pure as moonlight. Henceforth, they began to take jade, which glowed as gently as the light of the moon, and cast it into the river. As they did this, they would pray for good omens for fertile land, for, so for clement weather, and for their riverbanks to hold strong. Over time, these rituals grew in power, until one day, one day... <sighs> Big Sis Fujin? What happened next? One day, the long war to become the gods who would reign over this world began. Afterward, this tradition lost all of its meaning. But though it was forgotten, its name is still passed down over generations. To cut a long story short, this piece of votive rain jade before us was the very last one ever to be thrown. Just as the part above the surface, when commanded by an adeptal art, can be made large enough to stop a flood, its core, too, has been swollen by uncontrolled adeptal energy. Much of its power has dissipated into the surrounding area through the spirit veins. This power may also have affected the nearby flora and fauna, attracting and even making aberrations of them. You must be careful. What? As far as I can tell, the adeptal energy that has dissipated nearby should be sufficient to reawaken the hibernating votive rain jade. If this is the case, we're one step closer to achieving our goal of nursing the water and soil back to health. 
Ahem. How should I say this? Aya and Paimon, thank you both. You're doing an amazing thing by choosing to help me, you know. And little Mao, will you help me too? Will you help out your big sis? Of course! I want to restore nature too! Is that so? Well, that's good. You're very smart, little Mao. You'll understand everything later. Alright, then let us go our separate ways for now. Once you've retrieved the adeptal energy filled votive rain jade, we'll meet again by a deep pool shrouded in cloud and mist to the south. The south. Got it! Eh? She's gonna disappear again! Ah, well, uh, ah, well, let's just do what Big Sis Fujin said and restore this voting rain jade's power. Speaking of which, what's it got to do with voting? See, see, you're not that much better than Paimon. Huh. Uh, it's votive, not voting. Oh, right. It's so complicated. Though, since you mentioned it, what does votive even mean? And why is it called rain jade again? Exactly! What does it mean? Hmm. Good point. Uh, collect the scattered adeptal energy. So, how do we do this? Well, what are we doing? Oh, I see. I wanna make sure we're not gonna miss a chest by accident. Because I'll be awkward. Hmm. I think I'll be fine. We could always come back since we have to teleport. <clears throat> right. Time to go. Into the wind. Whoa. Giant bells. What the? That was random. What is the map? Okay. Let's uh, do this. Huh, I'm here. Think you can bully me? More into the wind. As one with wind and cloud, into the wind. Check this out. Take this. Sealies. Oh, three. Three little sealies. We must follow. Hip. Oh, right. Oh, that's two. Let's go follow. Reward on the road. Let me go check my achievements. Okay, we got a few of them. Okay, discovered the secret. And huh. 
Okay, I guess we have to do this later. For now, let's keep collecting the energies. Uh, so I think we're forgetting a couple of them back up. Oh gosh. Ah! Gotta <laughs> be careful of the camera angles. Check. Oh, there's one of these rock piles. Okay, make sure. Oh gosh, cameras. A board created by a depthal energy. Into the wind! Don't get too close! Lightning flash! Think you can bully me? The wind knows me. Okay, doesn't matter. It's fine. Go back here. Had to do the thing this way. Let's, uh, let's continue with it then. Oh, my leg. I'm sitting on it too long. going to switch <laughs> characters out. Uh, I'll switch to a different team. <laughs> so this could be a little easier on me. Prepare to be amazed. Um, and I am floating and glitched. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think I get it. That's it. Okay. 
Okay, that's it. Okay, return to devoted brain shade. First, I have to switch back. I'm not gonna miss anything so I don't have to make too many additional trips okay and obviously we, we can't swim unless it's Fontaine so let's keep going the wind knows me The riverbed should have lots of other votive rain shades. Why does Big Sis Fujin only want this one? Look! It's shiny! Almost as if it's resonating with the adeptal energy on you, Aya. Why don't we try using that power, huh? Should do it. Wow, awesome! It suddenly became small. Yeah, Paimon didn't think it just changed size like that. Guess that's a millennia old treasure for you. It's just like you said, little Mal. They could be as tall as the clouds, or small enough to hide amidst pool and leaf. Yeah, well, looks like the votive rain jade's in our hands now. You're so reliable, Aya. Hey, Paimon worked hard, too. Miss Paimon's amazing. So you're going to take us to that deep pool shrouded in cloud and mist to the south now, right? Clouds and mist. Hmm. I think Chenyu Vale really does have places like that. But where? Tell us, little guide, and Paimon will take you there. Do you remember the place Mountain mentioned? The spot where we met? That place is super foggy, and I know of a secret cavern that leads there. Even the other locals don't know about it. It was my friend who showed me the way. And since you're my friend too, Paimon, I'll tell you all about it. You've got an amazing friend, little Mal. Your f or your friend in the mountains. Are they connected to Adeptus Fuji? Hmm. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, they're both pretty impressive, too. Well, any friend of yours is a friend of ours, too. In fact, Paimon hopes we will meet her on the way. Shall we go? Paimon's gonna take you all to the place you mentioned, Little Mal. Uh, I think I already found everything in this area, so let's just go. Take us away, Miss Paimon. Alrighty then, let's go. Hmm. What is the name of that achievement? Okay, go to the river, which is just ahead. Retrieve the final votive rain jade. Jade, oh Jade, grant me my wish. Is that a reference? I don't know. I, there's so many things that I will not get because, like, I would probably not know the reference or something like that. Oh, another one of these puzzles. Oh, 
do that later because it does require me to light up all of the things at once. Oh, low mouth disappeared. Okay, keep going. Oh, there you are. Aya, Paimon! Hey! Mal, look out behind you! Oh! Hello there. Our options are, whoa, that's a huge monster. Get behind me, I'll settle this. Or, wait, your friend, you say? Uh, okay. I don't think we should fight this. I think it's not hostile. That's right. I told you before that I had a lot of friends, didn't I? Well, I just happened to meet her, so I could, I got a hold of her to introduce you, to introduce to you. Um, well, hello? Hmm. Uh, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Aya, and this is Paimon. Uh... Um, she's uh, afraid of strangers. I usually call her Bluey because I don't really know her name. Oh, don't you worry about that. I and Paimon are great people. They've been accompanying me on my adventures. They're real experts in mountains and forests too. I know, I've seen. Answer me this one thing. Where did you gain the power to suppress nature? Suppress nature? What do you mean? Plants pursue the sunlight and fertile soil, creating fruit fit for the birds and beasts to consume. The digested seeds are scattered, and those which consume seed and fruit become bait for predators. Thus does everything return to the land. The snake hidden in the branches, the fish in the mountains, and the beasts of the forest. Traveling in the realm of nature is wonderful. So why have you come? Oh, come on, Bluey. You don't have to be so fierce. You raised two questions. My adeptal energy comes from Adeptus Fujin. Our goal is to nurse the soil and water in Chinyu Vale. Oh, okay. And the adeptal energy we use comes from Adeptus Fujin. Exactly! Something's off about Chinyu Vale's natural conditions, so Adeptus Fujin's enlisted our help. If we don't, well, the tea leaves in Chaoying Village are gonna turn out worse and worse. And the village itself might decline. That's why she wanted us to perform the Rain Jade Rite, which will restore the area. The Rain Jade Rite. I see. You have answered two of my questions. You may ask me to also. Huh? Why do we have to do that? Give and take. It is only natural. You have one more question. Wait, that one counted? <sighs> Whatever, you want to sky ya. Uh, little Mal said that you want to restore nature. Mm, do you know Adeptus Fujin? Hmm, I feel like they're related questions. Uh, is that the same as nursing the water and soil? Not the same. Eh? It isn't. Aya, yeah, what were you talking about? That's right. What do you mean, not the same? The new tea leaves taste better. More like before. Huh? Eh? More like... Whoa! And just like that, she's gone! Don't worry about it, Paimon. She's like that. 
Sometimes when I'm not looking, she'll just vanish into the shadow of the trees. Then at others, the sun might dazzle me. Or the birds might call overhead. And there she is. In any case, guess we're all friends now. Uh, nice. Uh, let's hope so. Sure. Yeah, your friend's pretty strange, little Mal. Is she? Well, for all you know, you're the one who might seem strange to others. I mean, not only can you use adeptal energy to make the moss disappear, but you can make the golden stone things appear and vanish, and even turn into a carp and fly around, like in the stories. You've got a point. That said, Paimon couldn't have imagined that the friend you always spoke of, spoke about was... Well, Monster seems a bit rude, and Thing might be pretty offensive. That's right, your friend's so blue. No wonder you call her Bluey. <laughs> That's why I've never told anyone. If the adults knew that we were friends, they might lock me up. Wait, really? You'd go to actual prison? No, no, not like that. They just wouldn't let me go out. Make me wash my face, and force me to read my books. I wouldn't get to play in the mountains anymore. <laughs> oh. Oh gosh, disconnect. <laughs> and that's why I've never told anyone. But you're my friends, so it's fine. Anyway, come with me. There's an awesome place I'd love to show you. Wow, it was also close to the end, so my internet disconnected right before the cutscene ended. Okay, there's monsters up ahead. Let's uh, also take a look. Okay, where are we going? I'm guessing here, so let's keep let's walk through this uh, cave system. Also get this chest. Don't get too close. Lightning flash. Oh. There you go. Is this an answer from this world? Take care of the nearby miasma. Oh. Okay, miasma. Gosh, let me close this thing real quick. Okay. Just saw something on the side of my screen and it popped up. Anyways. Defeat the leader of the monsters before following the trail to the source of the miasma and purifying it with adeptal energy. Okay. Shake it and... One with nature. Oh, they're tough. Yeah. Into the wind. Oh, there's yeah, multiple sword. Ah. One with nature. There you go. A reward on the road. Uh. All right. Um, okay, so we're going in here. Enter the cavern. <laughs> this uh, mean this time. You're awesome, Aya. You push the moss back just like that. Like you did with that smoky cloud. 
Still, that wasn't there yesterday. Is this what they call nature? Don't worry about it, Monster Hilly Churls. Just leave them all to Aya. Little Mel, what's this picture about? <laughs> Originally, I didn't know either, but I figured it out today after hearing Big Sis Fujin's story. This must be the stuff that happened before the mural on Mount Lingming was made. See this? Long, long ago, people were able to talk to the gods and Adepti in disguise by talking to that big piece of jade in the middle. The emissary of the gods would lead them to and protect them. See, that's gotta be this shiny golden person standing in the middle. I bet that was a super amazing person. But later, just like Big Sis Fujin said, something changed, and the people of Chen Yu Vale lost their guiding emissary, and they couldn't talk to the heavens any longer. That's how the Rain Jade Rite came about. Hmm, huh. your story does make sense. <laughs> Thanks! What do you think, Aya? Um, you're a, pr you're a pretty bright spark, little Mel. That's a distinct possibility. I'm not sure. It's possible. Come to think of it, our ancestors were pretty amazing themselves, huh? The jades they left a left to us still have the power to restore nature. For something this old to still be so strong, the past must have been a sweller time than the present, huh? Okay, our options are, that's not true. The world marches onward. Or, that's right, the world's been constantly in decline. I'll pick this. Leaving the accumulated detritus of the past in its wake. Hmm, huh, that's a really cool thought. I never thought about it that way. Heh, <laughs> Paimon thinks that you're the amazing one, little Mal. We've seen lots of ancient objects and puzzles, mysterious powers, and monsters in our time, but Paimon's never considered this stuff before. <laughs> oh, you know what? Not thinking about this stuff at all is pretty awesome too, really. I bet you'll be just like my big sister when you grow up, just having fun adventuring everywhere. Oh, you have a big sister then? Well, we're not blood related, but she worked here in Chen Yu Vale for a while. She'd go up mountains and run around the rivers, and I'd follow her. We discovered this little cave together. She said that this cave is my Rubicon. Not that I know what that means. However, she hasn't written to me in a long time. If I were to guess, she's off adventuring in some faraway place. Maybe in the ancient city of East or something like that. Huh. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hmm. I think we may know who it is, but my memory is kind of fuzzy, so I don't know. I'll just say that sounds about right, or I don't know. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this big sis of yours sure seems like an interesting person. I know, right? Still, big sis Fuji needs her help, so let's continue on. Oh, there you all were. Oh, I was so worried. Wow, a golden carp! <clears throat> One was quite concerned that the swirling miasmas and fierce beasts that roam might have caused you ill. But one sees that it is not so, and that is good. Thanks to the adeptal energy we you possess, Aya, one has been connected to the golden carp here, thus gaining the means to speak with you directly. Aya, Paimon, Little Mal, please come with me. Alright. Follow the golden carp. Hmm. Oh, we're getting closer to this place. Jade fragment. Oh no, 
I just realized I have enough HP. Uh, food, food. What is this? Lightning flash! Think you can bully me? Can it get closer? You slowly do this. It's fine. Up ahead. So we're gonna unlock this area. Much time has passed since I last emerged here. This was once a lively place. Filled with the aroma of incense. Then, the three of us could travel freely across the mountains and rivers. Yes, those days were like flowing water. Neath the moon, dark, yet sparkling oh so brightly. Ah, but enough reminis reminiscing. Thanks to you all, I am now able to return here and host a Rain Jade Rite. Eh? So... You're that person in the mural? Oh, I get it now. That person, standing on the mountain, hugging that egg. That was you, wasn't it? Uh, an egg? Come now, little Mal. That was, a, that was precious jade. Casting rain jade is a ritual of great power. Devoted rain jade can calm rivers, improve the weather, but it can also be a thing of death and slaughter. Only the thinnest line separates curses and the adeptal energies that have aided you up till now. That is why I must make sure that the right does not fall into the hands of those who would do ill. That's why. Ahem, yes, that is correct. One was indeed the figure who hugged that egg in that mural. Hmm. Huh. Thanks this Vujin. Doesn't this make you pretty, uh, ancient? Yes, it does. Still, I do like the name Big Sis. It does quite make me feel young. Well, being called Adeptus is pretty alright too. Right? Well, certainly. Though, even if others title me as such, I am aware. That I am hardly the equal of true adepti like Mountain Shaper and the rest. I am, in truth, the weakest of my band of friends. I cannot, I cannot make medicines to save others, nor can I bound across the mountains and plains. Even so, I cannot simply lay the title down. It would have done the people of Chenyu Vale a disservice, I fear. Still, you may call me whatever you wish. After all, we have become friends, or so I would say. In any case, my days of being called an adeptus are now consigned to history, just like this place has been. Once the Rain Jade Rite was a day of great celebration where we would com commemorate the Year of Abundance, using laughter, firecracker battles, and beast dances to frighten the ill omens away. This must appear like naught but forgotten ruins to the modern mind. Well, not completely forgotten. That's right! People in Chao Ying Village told us that it was the mighty Adeptus Fu Jing who defeated the demons and planted the first tree tea, tea tree. Back on the bamboo raft, Grandpa Lu also mentioned that the offerings of tea were to a certain carp Adeptus. What? Back on the bamboo? Okay. I'll just accept it. And wasn't there that opera song at Yilong Wharf about the carp going around killing stuff? <laughs> you were so awesome in those stories, Big Sis. Oh, I didn't realize this was Mal. Oops. I think I misread the dialogue. It's fine. And wasn't there that opera song at Yilong Wharf about the carp going around killing stuff? 
<laughs> you were so awesome in the stories, Big Sis Fujin. Also, people still do the Wusho dance, you know? You said it yourself. The definition of an adeptus is... Hmm. Also, putting definitions aside, you're our friend, Fujin. You, you shouldn't be constantly fretting about the right and stuff. You should live happily, like we're companions on an adventure. That's right. We're on an adventure together. Right. Yes, you're right. Thank you. That was well said. Indeed. I was the one who asked you all for help. It wouldn't do at all if I just continued wallowing in the past. Now would I? Would it? In any case, I'll need your help to prepare for the rite itself. In any case, have you encountered any sacred simulacra in your adventures? Those are ritual spirits often used by people in ancient times to protect their homes. There should be some nearby. Aya, Paimon, Little Mal, please help me put the simul simulacra in their proper places. That way, we can restore the spirit veins using the rain shade right. Leave it to us. I will. I have faith in you. Okay, prepare for the rain jade right. Ugh. Oh, Seely. Let's get to Seely too. Oh, we can walk on the water. Oh gosh. Into the wind. go and one more <clears throat> oh oh this way them um, in place. Jade has been returned to its priest, and the statues have come back to their rightful places. The Rain Jade Rite is now ready to be to be performed. But will Chen Yu Vale really recover once you cast the Rain Jade in? That's right. Things will get better for us, little Mal. Nature, Jade, humans, all is divinely dictated. The changes in the land and water in Chen Yu Vale, the malicious fog in the spirit veins. They are all essential, essentially a sign of the earth moving against the flow of time. Yeah. Huh. So that miasma-like thing is a manifestation of environmental disorder? <laughs> That's right. You can think of it like Chen Yu Vale's attempt to... How to put it? Return to nature? And what we intend to do here is to treat the land and soil. And get and rid of and rid it of the sickness. 
return to nature? After all, before humans left their caves and mountains to dominate the world and regulate nature, and before Chinyu Vale or Bishui River got their, those names, the land, mountains, and rivers had their own order. <laughs> Even I sometimes miss the cool mountain streams and the great rivers that would ebb and flow with the seasons. I mean, I was once a mere fish that swarm. Swamp. But if we let nature seize control of its order once more, the people of Chenyu Vale will suffer and languish. I hope you can understand. Yeah. In that case... just now nothing seems to have changed it seems I am too feeble in my current state eh? we got the vote of range aid and we placed the simulacra but it still wasn't enough I'm very sorry it is not your fault I need more power to overcome this trial just as the adeptal energy in the votive range aid has dissipated into the spirit veins, so has my power also left me across the long years. Huh? Will you grow really big just like the jade? But probably not. <laughs> just think about it though. Super Adept Adeptus Fujin, now three times the size. Well, is there any way we can restore your power? The Golden Carp. Ah, Aya, you are wise indeed. Before you found a few Golden Carp, I could not even muster the strength to appear. Initially, I thought that we just needed to gather all the ritual implements, and that would make up for the deficiency in my power. I was not entirely open with you before, but neither the present nor past me was anywhere near a match for the Adepti of the South. I feared you would consider me weak and unworthy of your help. Gee, is that it? Paimon thought you'd have something more important to say. Huh? There's no way we'd abandon or not... We'd abandon or not make friends with you just because of that. Um... That you are my friend has nothing to do with your status as an adeptus. My friend told me lots of stories about you. In my mind, even though we've just met, we're already friends. And I also want you to be happy, big sis. Alright, alright. Thank you, all of you. Well, that's where I like it. So, where should we start looking for these golden carp? I believe that you will have to go to Yaoji Valley. There will be a cavern there with a golden carp hidden within. Hmm. Alright. Okay. Where is it? Oh, all the way here. Okay, good thing I already unlocked teleport points. Because I don't think I want to walk that great distance. Ugh. Okay, so this way. Oh, that's a lot of things. Oh, and some, like, other things, too. What? What did I get? Oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, another miasma tree. Knows 
to the wind. Take this! What? Listen, Nick. Shake it and stir. Here we go. Get it. Clouds high. The birds call. One with nature. Lightning flash. Fire it up. Into the wind. Think you can bully me? Check this out. Take this. What? Why is it disappearing? from this world all right yeah she when all this started she sent us to like her realm and it's called a carp's arrest i think <sighs> a lot of materials <sighs> Blurry and only a few incomplete sentences written in elegant handwriting are legible. As the vivid butterflies converge in the jar, the adeptal energy surges anew, akin to new life restored to a withered tree. Go west and behold Ling Shu Courtyard and. Where's that? Oh, look at that. The name tag there. I don't know where that is. Ah, the mushrooms! That is! The wind knows me. Oh, you read it again. Wait, what? I'm guessing it's somewhere that we haven't been to yet. Or I have to keep exploring. Either way. Um, we'll probably worry about that a little bit later. keeps growing. It seems the water and soil in the cave are quite nutritious. Maybe in a few years, once it grows a little bigger, that medicine jar will be too small for this young tree. She connected the door opening mechanism with the jar the branch is planted in, breathing life-giving adeptal energy into said mechanism. It seems the jar containing the mechanism was damaged a long time ago. I wonder if the door can still open and close. Hmm. Oh, am I supposed to get the...
Chisang wall? Huh. Oh, it's broken. Or destroyed, actually. We're here, big sis Fujin. Have you been waiting for us here all this time? <laughs> no, no. After leaving Carp's Rest, I can only appear in places in which my power remains. And only by the grace of your adeptal energy, Aya. Wait a minute. Didn't the gap in the middle of that mural originally have something that went with the golden carp mural, it, mural in it? I'm not sure. In truth, this is my first time seeing this mural as well. Huh? I'm sure you've all heard of the battles that took place in the past. Yeah. Conria and the Archon War. Yes. This cave was one of the shelters we built for the inhabitants of Chenyu Vale. Such that the innocents caught in the crossfire when the floods overturned the heavens and the earth split open could have a place of safety. I didn't expect that they'd draw a mural here, though. I believe the ones depicted to be me, and I mean the big slippery carp little Mal mentioned, and a friend. Hmm. Huh. If that's the case, why did the most important part get taken somewhere else? If that's true, why is that? Perhaps dissatisfaction. The three of us were once great friends, with two of us becoming worshipped as the Depti, and one of us was always the mountain's master. Later, Herblord, Her, Her, oh, Herblord, and I defected together, and she most likely died too. Or perhaps the one amongst us who fought to the last never submitted, and only heard news of us afterward. Perhaps to her, we were all traitors, with the depictions of myself and Erblard, Lord, becoming an object for her to vent her fury against. Hmm, huh. is that really the case? The painting outside looks like... Who knows? In any case, that's all in the past. So please, lend me your strength in nursing Chen Yu Vale back to health. I can feel that there's another golden carp lingering where I used to. Near Mount Xuanlian, I believe. Oh, so there's another? If we get that one, I should have enough strength to perform the ritual. Speaking of that... I must apologize for being unable to control the Golden Carp, even with you nearby. I know they might have given you some trouble swimming through the air like that. Uh, it's fine. I just think of them like sealies. But really, where is the Golden Carp that should be here? <laughs> well, inside the painting. Just use your adeptal energy to awaken it, Aya. do anything here yeah we can't okay okay I'll put this uh, I don't know what they are are they statues or something <laughs> I guess I'll worry about this later. Oh, a 
here. Okay, I did a little bit of exploring here, so I already got some things, uh... <laughs> some things are done around this area. Okay, I don't want to bother too much with that, uh... <sighs> With uh, getting a chest and exploring right now, let's focus on. Okay. What's up there? Let's, yeah, first let's do this. Huh, there's a pavilion here on this mountain. It's rather a death die style. Hmm, Paimon wonders where we'll find that golden carp. This place is kind of huge. Maybe we can do what we did last time. You know, Aya, the bit where you use the deathal energy on the mural, and the carp turned out to be hiding inside. Look, Aya, there's four stone carp statu statues here. Do you think there might be a f might be four giant carps hiding inside? Hmm, and this makes sense. You're a pretty smart little mal. Aya, is the deathal energy reacting in any way? Uh, not at all. But there seems to be something missing inside. Huh, that might be where the criti critical clue lies. Ah, Aya, over there. It looks like there's an orb inside some of these carp statues. Didn't we find some statues of carps and large pearl on our way down the mountain? Carps and large pearl, okay. Uh, maybe those are actually used for something. Uh, that's worth a try. Good job, little Mal. <laughs> well, let's give it a go then. I found one of them. What? Can I find more? Okay. Oh, it tells me some locations. Okay. Uh. First, can I go to get this? There you go. Spirit carp. Okay, let's teleport closer. Oh, that's not really close. Uh. <sighs>
Is that the orb? No. Oh, now it's the orb. There you go. Is this an answer from this world? Okay, so we got the orb. <laughs> and now... Oh, we have that one left. Slowly. Okay, enemies again. Let's go, oh, let's no, go. not this thing again. Yeah. Into the wind. Fire it up. Lightning flash. Think you can bully? Wind strike. Don't get too close. Take this. Okay. First, we have to get that. Wait, no, it has to go there. There you go. Oh, and there's still a chest right there. <gasps> and obviously right there too, but first. <laughs> over here. There you go. We're teleporting up because I am not going to take the long way. That'll take too long. Oh. My apologies for the poor hospitality. It has been a long time since I last enjoyed tea with others. Hopefully, my brewing skills have not deteriorated too much over time. One... Uh, I mean, I have some experience when appreciating tea. It was also thanks to this that I was able to tell that this year's tea offering smelled off. That was how I discovered the trouble with the soil and water quality. Uh, huh. Didn't think the offering rights would be so useful. I suppose now I can tell those who fail to appreciate the value of tea above its value with confidence. Come, Maya, have some tea. Is this your teapot, Fujin? Yeah, and also, yeah, the other, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there was that time in Leila Harbor where we fixed Madame Ping's teapot for her. If you think about it, we seem to have quite a connection with tea. Madam Ping? Ah, I think I know of whom you speak. We were acquainted back in the day, along with her friends. As Little Mel said, I was once just a giant carp, unable to leave fresh water for too long, nor live in salty waters. As such, they sent me one of these teapots. That was how my friends would have been able to take me, Inside my teapot, of course, to Gwili Plains in Liyue Harbor to meet those lovely people they spoke of. Unfortunately, such a time never quite came. Aya, Paimon, you've been to Liyue Harbor. Could you tell me more about the city? I'd like to hear about it too. I've never been. Well, Paimon would like to start from Wang Min Restaurant. How about I handle the explanations this time? Sure, but don't you dare skip over any of the eating bits. It is a port city built nestled against the mountains. You begin only for Fujin to interrupt you. She notes that you she notes that she'd like to hear your Lewis story. You understand and begin again. 
When we arrived in Lewa Harbor, Paimon and I were just in time for the Rite of Dissension. The children and adeptus before you listen to your words. And Paimon's incessant interjections, leaning forward as you speak, exclaiming in shock and relaxing as the tension in the tale rises and falls. They also add their own commentary and questions about Lewe, such as the food and flavors available at restaurants, the toys the old lady sells, the gems and jewelry of Fei Yun Slope, and such. As you watch Fujin, Little Mao, and Paimon be so moved by the tale, Along this journey, we met many friends and experienced so many things. Uh, it was all worth it. Wow! A sea monster, huh? Amazing! Mele Harbor is not what I imagined. Do you find it disappointing? Well, no, it's just different. Being different doesn't make it bad. I like the Lewa Harbor you described. It's good to hear that after all this time, our dear Herb Lord was able to find a home there. I think that's simply wonderful. Huh. What about you, little Mal? Could you tell me about you and your friend? I'm curious to know what she's like. Um, sure. I mean, Paimon and I have met her already, so it wouldn't be fair if I didn't tell you. So, this is how we met. At the time, I was still a little kid who didn't know anything about the mountains. It was nighttime, and some wild beasts were following me through the forest. It was super scary. Finally, I was chased to a clearing and surrounded by those beasties. For a moment, I was convinced I was gonna get eaten, but suddenly, they all backed off into the woods, and then they were gone. When I looked back, there she was, looking at me. She was like Jade, but there was a dignity to her. I knew it then, that she was the master of the mountain that my grandparents had told me about. I wasn't scared, I just told her. I finally found you. I've been looking for you for so long. I don't know why, but she lowered her head and thought before walking off. She made no noise as she did so. I listened as hard as I could, but there were no sounds of anything stepping on branches or fallen leaves. After that, I would sometimes catch sight of her, moving between trees in a flash. Sometimes, the rising moonlight, moonlight would outline her shadow as she stood atop a high mountain. At that time, I thought it was strange. Why hadn't I seen her before? She was always there, after all. I wanted to talk to her, but she would always turn and leave. It was only later that she became willing to talk to me. Much later, she would take me up very high mountains and into very deep forests. She asked me a lot of questions, and in exchange, she told me lots of stories. In the beginning, Chao Ying Village was a nameless, barren mountain, and the rivers had a real temper. Sometimes they'd flood, and other times they would all but wither. And on that barren mountain, she made two friends, a fish and a snake. But later, the snake was cut into pieces, and the fish sank into the sea. And then, only Bluey was left. Thank you, little Mal. Also, um, don't tell anyone about my friend, alright? Of course he won't. You seem quite familiar with this friend of little Mouse, Fujin. Indeed. But that was all in my past life. Many, many years have passed since I can no longer move freely. I suspect that I might not recognize her any longer. Though from little Mouse's words, she might not have changed too much. Past life? <laughs> Perhaps that is not the most accurate way to phrase it. I did not utterly perish, but I did lose my original form. 
and my strength and wisdom dissipated along the spirit veins. This is also why I invited you and Aya to Carp's Rest. If we were not there, I would not even have a form to show you or a voice with which to speak to you. I keep hearing this noise outside of my house and it's so weird. <laughs> Anyways. It is thanks to you that I've been able to slowly regain my previous strength. Coming here and once more seeing these scenes with my own eyes, meeting old friends from the past, and more importantly, making new friends. I'm very glad. How did you die? My memories of that have grown foggy. The herb lord and I were both servants of another god, and it was I that organized the rain jade rite, administering the rivers and mountains for our lord. As for the other, she was as she is, a beast, wild and free. In those peaceful days, I also climbed waterfalls to Mount Alsang and Mount Hulao, and there I met with the Adepti, whose powers and wisdom far eclipsed mine. Of course, that was all before the war. Our lord was not a heinous being by any means. Once upon a time, she made many dreams come true. If there was any evil, it was the Archon War itself. What happened next needs no further explanation on my part, I'm sure. You talked about how you and Herblord defected. Huh, <laughs> that's right. That might have been the bravest thing we've ever done. Our lord had all but gone mad seeking the position of a god who may rule this world. Or perhaps seeking survival. Either way, she lacked the power to overcome Morax. So, in a final, desperate gamble, she caused the Bishui River to flood, hoping to destroy everything downstream. Of course, she knew what that would mean for Chen Yu Vale and its people. Wow, but, uh, Paimon thinks that that's something you should never ever do, period. Perhaps that's just what war does to people. Either way, that was our final adventure as a trio of friends. Ling Wan attacked people with her familiars, hurting them to the shelter we had prepared. Herb Lord fought against our mistress, while I climbed, climbed Mount Ling Ming and hurled the votive rain jade into the rising waters. Of course, that wasn't a proper rain jade, right? It was simply the release of the adeptal energy stored within the jade pendant to have the earth open, its maw and swallow the rivers, and allow the jade mouth to grow and stabilize the flow. Wow, what happened next? <laughs> Didn't Lil well Mal tell you how it all ended? Yeah. That's right! Wait, really? When? Alright, that's enough about the past. We should get back to performing the rite itself. True, but what about the golden carp? Isn't that what we're looking for? In truth, you've already found it, as with the previous one. That's how I was able to appear before you. It's just that I missed the scenery here a bit too much, so I couldn't help but have a long chat with you all. After all, your sense of time and mine are not the same. You won't tarry long once your objectives are complete, will you? As such, I apologize. Please forgive my ca capriciousness. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Is this an answer from this world? Okay, so the card came from the teapot. Alright, go back to look for Fujin. Let's go. <clears throat> Though my power is still a far cry from how it was in the past, thanks to your aid, I have regained much strength. Thank you. Next, we need to perform the ceremony. 
What effects will it have? It's been thousands of years since we last performed it, and the mountains, rivers, and spirit veins have all changed a great deal. But if all goes well, the vote of Rain Jade will resolve the issue. Well then, let's begin. Oh gosh, lag. Dissipating. Ooh, look at this area. Wow, what's that? Huh, it's just like in the mural. Do you remember Paimon? The one with the two golden people and something in between them? Wow, you're really impressive, little Mao. Paimon didn't remember that at all. Behold, the sacred mountain. In my era, to merely climb it was already to transgress. But the ancestral inhabitants of this place are gone, and the communing path lies waste and broken. Who shall judge us now? That is where the spirit veins of Chenyu Vale converge. Through it, I can transmit my adeptal energy throughout the veil, restoring its water and its soil. We are one... We are only one step off from achieving our goal. Are you prepared, Aya? Well, let's do this. Indeed. There it is. Oh. Eight points. Trails of like seen added. Okay. That's what it's called. Oh. And it automatically is available. Oh, it's its own area, but no statue. Okay. I guess the achievement is related to... Oh, another one. Yeah, light up the entire map. Okay, activate. Oh... I forgot to get that one. That's fine. Oh, follow the carp. Or Fujin. There 
I go. I'll keep this close. Oh, what the heck? I was weird. Okay, let's keep going. Ooh. Ow, my arm. Bunch of these uh, simulacras, I think. Oh, Ling Wan, I perceived it would be you. I do miss you so, but this really might be a bad time. So Bluey's name is Ling Wan? Hmm. Don't be like that. Speak with me. The opportunity to speak will come, but it is not now. You know this. I know this, but I cannot allow it. Wait just a while longer. It will end soon. I do not like the things up there, but it does not matter. Just leave it to me, Fujin. Do not come up here. Hmm. Ah! Mugu and Kaimi. Take this! Shake it up! The wind's melting. To the wind. weird. Ooh. The peak. Oh. I am quite sorry for not being completely frank with you earlier. Though I became aware of it during our travels, I did not wish to believe that my old friend Ling Wan would be the source of the storm that befets Chen Yu Vale. Hmm. I actually had an inkling already. Eh? You did? When? How did he figure it out? She, Herb Lord, and I once defended Chen Yu Vale together. To think that she would do something so wicked. Her disruption of the spirit veins has caused a miasma to propagate, and the one who stopped me from performing the rite the first time was also her. A big sis Fujin! Bluey, I mean, Ling Wan isn't a bad person. I know, little Mal. She is your friend. But at the same time, at this time, she is the greatest threat to Chen Yu Vale. If she controls the sacred mountain, she will wield the power to completely alter the land of Chen Yu Vale in the blink of an eye. I fear that Ling Wan has already entered Shi Wang Terrence. Terrace before us. She means to rewrite the flow and path of the spirit veins. We have little time left. Aya, you have mastered the adeptal energy available here in Chen Yu Vale. Ling Wan and her familiars will not be your match. Please, accompany me for a time and aid me for the sake of the people in Chen Yu Vale. I will perform a ritual and open up the way to Ching Wong Terrace. Please stay by my side and protect me. Okay. 
Wait, where are they? Oh, over there. Ah, get them. Time to go. One with nature. Another still over here. Take this. Let's go, let's go. Oh, not these things again. There's something about this, this particular into the wind foe that makes it so difficult. <laughs> It's a lot of HP, actually. Take this. you listen to me will you not wait your strength is feeble you cannot match me but do not worry you will soon recover ling Wan, say no more aya and i will stop you we will stop this plan to destroy chen yu vale the ritual is complete the gate to ching Wan terrace is now open Changes the direction of the spirit veins. Miasmic simulacra will. Okay, I'll just skim through this. I won't read out loud. Okay. Simulacra deal continuous damage. Hydro animo. Okay, use the depth of energy to get rid of the simulacra. Reviving all party members and granting them the protection of the spirit veins. Attack will increase under the protection. Decrease her. Okay. This thing. Calm Ling Wan down. I should probably heal um, a bit. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's use these. Just trying to find something, but no. Bellowing thunder! Oh, I didn't mean to activate my ult by accident. Think you can bully me? Wind 
Savage knows me. Check! Human, let me tell you what you shall do. Fire arrows at my heart. If you approach us, if you approach up close, strike me with your sword. I will fight you to the last. You are the only one here who can fight. When I have crushed your neck, I will triumph. No! I don't intend to kill you. Why? I do not understand. You've already lost. You're Fujin's friend. Fine. You may ask me one question. You still really care about doing things like that, even though you lost, huh? Then let us exchange, exchange questions. Little Mel? Do you have any questions? Um, Bluey, why did you have to fight? Can't we all be friends? You bunch of two-legged... And you, Fujin, you have not the strength to form two legs of your own, yet you wish to walk in their form and speak to me. But how can humans and wild beasts ever be friends? That's not true, Bluey. You're lying. If that's the case, why didn't you just let those beasts eat me back then? If humans and beasts can't be friends, and you're a beast, you shouldn't have helped me. My actions are sometimes beyond even my own understanding. You were merely fortunate. Well, why didn't you just eat Mountain as well? She almost bumped into you while lost in the fog at the foot of the mountain. I saw it. Hmm. You humans possess such wisdom that even nature submits to your will. In that case, you tell me. Why didn't I eat her? Eh? What kind of question is that? Mount Lyxin is dear to Adeptus Fujin. Let us just assume you are correct. She has told me much about the Rain Jade Rite. Perhaps those memories affected my actions. You actually remembered everything I told you. Every year before the rite, you would tell me and that white snake how expectant you were and how nervous. And after the rite, you would tell us how the festivities was so fun and lively. You would always speak and I could not help but listen. Only humans forget. 
I forget nothing. You have cleared this doubt of mine. Now, you may ask a question. Well, Adeptus Fujin, have you any questions? Thank you, Aya. Just a while back, Ling Wan, I was telling them stories about our past. Why do you wish to wreck Chen Yu Vale, which we once fought so hard to protect? You planted tea trees, promising to enjoy tea with us. This too I remember, but that sort of tea no longer exists. I wanted to change this land. I want to make it like it was all those millennia ago. You have walked with humans for too long. You have forgotten that you, I, and the snake all came from nature. I knew that you never truly perished, and you did not depart this place like the snake. So I wish to change this place to the form it had when you were born. All these years, I have been slowly adjusting the spirit veins. Oh, I get it! So that's where the miasma came from. Correct. Side effects. In the end, the process will change the soil, the waters, and the forests to what they should have been. What the soil, waters, and forests should have been? You truly have forgotten in the past. The rivers rose and fell with the rains, and their path was not fixed. The tea trees and flowers were not trimmed or cultivated, nor did they exist for humanity. In such an environment, you would regain your old form and frolic once more in the great rivers. You would regain your strength. Spiritual power blanketed the land in those days. The wild shrubs grew thick. Now the mountains and forests are silent and the shimmering voice of the spring waters, tinkling like jade, can be heard no longer. But you don't understand. You still think you must be, you must stop me. Linglon, I count myself more blessed than most to have lived such a happy life. And in the end, my soul returned to my home. You are the one who does not understand. Yes, and I have never understood. After you defeated me, you should have taken my territory. You planted tea on my mountain and gave that land to the humans. I do not understand why you did this. Chen Yu Vale was once but a nameless land, and we were nameless insects, beasts, and fish. I was the master of an uncultivated mountain, and today, that place belongs to neither of us. You took a human form and walked among them. You instituted the rain jade rite and helped them change the soil and water. I did not understand then either, but I could see how happy you were. The snake changed into a human form and used her knowledge to create medicines and save the sick. I could understand how the agile human fingers could help her do what she wished, but I do not know why it was done. What happened after caused me still more confusion? You fought alongside humans and their so-called gods, and you perished. Humans fighting each other over territory and survival. Now that I can understand. You both belong to the great river and the mountainous forest. You could have chosen to leave them and live on with me. Let that which is human belong to them, and nature belong to nature. Even if our territory were to shrink, we could still live freely. But now you wish to stop me and defend this land subdued by humanity. Answer me. Why? Ling Wang, my friend, it is as you say. I do wish to protect them. Do not answer me with my own question. I was asking you why. This Ling Wang might be a beast. But she sure cares about the order of things, huh? I know. That's how I learned so much from her. So you guys were just discussing stuff in the mountains? Well, not totally. That said, after hearing everything Bluey said about Bix's Fujin, I thought they'd be happy to meet each other. At first, I was like you. I did not understand humanity. 
and I did not enjoy their excessive demands and love of hoarding, or their eternal desire to have more than they need, while caring so little for the needy themselves. Trading, wealth, like you, I did not understand these concepts and did not understand why they influenced human joy and sorrow. But across the long years, I have also seen many other things. The cries of children break my heart, and the sound of an old person's shattered memories saddens me. Just as though it were all a microcosm of these mountains and rivers. Have you noticed them? Seen them? The children who wash their little feet in the streams, fishermen laughing beneath the light of the rainbow's arc, the moonlight trysts of lovebirds, their figures painted silver. Humans, too, are creatures of this land. Just how different is their innocence from ours? You mean to say that you have chosen to take their side due to these emotions? not through natural principles or logic, and not due to anyone's orders. I suspect that Herb Lord had much uh, the same reasons as I. That said, I'm sure she put it all very differently. Huh. I remain unsatisfied with your answer, Fujin. I do not understand. Do you not? I think you've understood for a long time. When our Lord... When our previous god raised the waters, it was you who brought your familiars around to attack the people and drive them to the shelters we had created. I just... I just wish to help my friends, to make their wishes reality. Even if doing so means going against nature and the principles you follow? Even if it means... Even if it meant going against nature and the principles I follow, I would do so anyway. Well, then we aren't all that different now, are we? Didn't you also choose your own position on account of your feelings? Hmm. I am satisfied with your answer, Fujin. Now, you may ask a question. Very well. May I ask the next question, Aya Paimon? Uh, sure. Ask away. Uh, Paimon can't really think of any good questions at the moment. Since you've got one, you go right ahead. You acknowledged my answer, acknowledged me, and acknowledged that you made choices based on your own feelings. Now, let me ask you. N no, don't ask. You know what I'm going to ask you, right? If I needed your help, would you still make the same choice? That's right. And what's your answer? <sighs> yes, I would. Even should another thousand years pass, and even if you ask me a thousand more times, my answer would be the same. In that case, Ling Wan, I do in fact need your help. I truly wish to save the people of Chen Yu Vale. So please, don't stop me from nursing the water and soil, alright? I promise you, Fujin, you have walked with humans for much time and have learned their cunning. While I am but a foolish beast, my claws and teeth are sharp, but I am no match for you. Thank you, Ling Wan. And thank you, Aya, Paimon, and Little Mao. You've accompanied me for so long, and you've helped me a lot. I wouldn't have made it here without you. <laughs> I'm happy to have helped you, Big Sis. I'm so glad that Bluey got to meet you all, too. I was so worried when you fought. You also have my thanks, Aya, Little Mao. It was you who brought Fujin to me. Though the circumstances of the meeting were not what I hoped for. And what about Paimon? Hmm? Alright then, let us begin.
sis Fujin? Big sis. Where did she go? Do you still not understand? She used all the energy she accumulated recently to nurse the land. Wait, if that's the case, does that mean... Yes, it is as you suspect. But she struggled so hard to... So we have now finished nursing the soil and water. The miasma that remains will not disappear immediately. So you'll have to be careful out there. Eh? Sorry for making you all see me like this. It is just as Ling Luan said. I have completely used up the energy I accumulated recently, and I can no longer maintain my favored form. Here, Adeptus Fujin. <sighs> Seriously, Ling Wan. What about me? Uh, she wasn't entirely wrong, Paimon. As long as you're still here, Adeptus Fujin. Though my form is as, as it has become, I am far more comfortable than before. At first, I was trapped at Carp's Rest. I could only reminisce about the outside world through the scent of the tea offerings. If I had not met you and Paimon, people of such compatibility with the spirit veins, I would have had none but my shadow to talk to, much less be able to leave Carp's Rest. Thank you for your concern. Please forgive me, but I must depart now. I'll need a bit of rest. And another thing, Ling Wan. Speak. What else would you have me do? Or not do? Nothing. I just didn't get to say this due to the circumstances that prevailed before. But... But it's so good to see you again. I know. Hmm... Thank you all. Eh? Where did that one come from? I should thank you for bringing her back. Safe, smooth, and slippery. Even the way in which her fins move is the same as I remember. You sure have a, a strange way of remembering people. Or fish. Whichever. I do not know how you did it nor why you were able to obtain her adeptal energy. All these thousands of years, and I never once heard of her voice. It might be due to Aya's, uh, unique constitution? I see. However, I am but a foolish beast. Even if I wanted to see her again, I would not know of a better way. I could only spend thousands of years clumsily imitating her methods, regulating the spirit veins in this land. I am quite stupid, <laughs> quite stupid, and I only knew this method, and so I did it. It was akin to scooping every droplet from a rushing river, or every grain of sand from the vast desert. I knew as well that she would not smile as she once did, even if these mountains return to how they once were. She, I, and the snake once laughed and swam happily here. Those days will never come again. She loves huma humanity too much, even more than she loves herself. Had I succeeded, she would only hate me. But that would have not mattered to me so long as she could regain her form and swim free once more. <sighs> and Paimon thought you were more concerned about nature. Of course I care. A land untamed by humans, a land of wild beasts. But that is a different subject from the matter of Fujin. If she thinks that a land tamed by humans is better, and that the strange tea leaves grown on such land taste superior, 
then I shall do what pleases her. So, thank you. Um, you're welcome? Well, speaking of that, Paimon's curious. What did the tea leaves taste like in the past? When the land changed before, the tea leaves' flavor was much closer to what it was in the past, apart from some differences due to human influence. Wait, so you mean that the weirdly flavored tea cakes we had were... Uh, in that case, I prefer the current flavor profile. Tea leaves cultivated by humanity will be more to their liking, of course. What I do not understand is Fujin's taste. If the snake was here, we could ask for her opinion. Perhaps, but perhaps her tastes have also become strange from spending so much time with humans. Before you go, Aya, I have one final question for you. Those that come from nature will, for some reason, go against nature. Against the laws nature originally followed. Will humans also go against humanity? Against the principles they initially followed for certain reasons? Um... That depends on the circumstances. You may as well have said just yes. Thank you. I received the answer I desired. Well then, Little Mal, Aya, and Paimon, we shall meet again. Alright then, see you later, Bluey. Also, remember to take care of Big Sis Fujin. She seems kind of weak right after, so she could use some extra care. I will. Farewell. Please wait, Ling Wan. I have a question for you as well. Ask, then. I do owe you that. If human activities are part of the laws of nature, how would you view humanity? A strange question. In the distant past, they were indeed part of nature. But they are so no longer. That is because... Hmm. No. I need to give this question more thought. Next time we meet, I will give you my answer. No. Escort little Mal back to Chao Ying Village. Hmm. Well, let's go back. Oh, uh, could we? There's something here. Better one of those uh, things. It here? I don't know, the map marker is not telling me much. Wait, where is it? Into the wind. Wait, where is it? Um <sighs> I'll worry about it later. Oh gosh. Uh Think about how many of this. I think I. Yeah, I got an achievement. Witness the completion of the Range 8 Rite. Oh, there's two teleport points. Okay, so other than this one, I didn't get. There's one more hidden. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Let's go back about my arms. Ow. Stretch. Stretch my arms. Good to get the muscles like stretched out and not like all curled up. Oh, we have quite a few quests as well, which I'll do on my own time. Let's go wrap this one up. I think we're about to finish it too, so. You're back. We were just saying that good rainfall is bound to bring good t 
tidings. And what do you know, dear guests? You've arrived right on time. How did it go? Well, I trust. Tell us all about it. Uh, it was thanks to Adeptus Fujin. We were able to clear the source of the ana anomaly. Anomalies. So, you met the legendary Carpadeptus? Oh my, as one would expect of the young miss of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. You really do have friends in high places. <laughs> it was a piece of cake for me. Now, your water and soil problems should be no more. Well, old Luo, what did I say? I told you it was a soil problem, but you wouldn't listen. If it wasn't for them, who knows when our tea leaf problem would be solved. Ahem, <clears throat> that, uh... Regardless, thank you both for your help, honored guests. With your help, and the protection of the Carp Adeptus, I'm sure our village will surely see a great harvest of tea leaves this coming year. Ah, yes, please take these. Take it as a token of our thanks. Right! Paimon almost forgot! I came across this kid during our adventures. Is he from the village too? <laughs> Uncle Luo, I'm back! Well, if it isn't you, little Mao. Finally of a mind to come back, huh? Eh? You don't seem worried at all. And what is there to fret about? This kid runs around in the mountains all the time, and he always comes back safe after getting tired. If you ask me, there's been an adeptus looking after him in secret all along. You know, maybe that might even have been said carp adeptus. I've said it before. That wasn't an adeptus. It was Bluey. All right, all right, little Mal. Don't argue with Luo here. He's just pretending to know what he's talking about. Come by my place later. I'll make you some egg custard. Woohoo! Egg custard! <laughs> and now you pretend to be a good person. Wait, what do you mean, pretending to know? In any case, I don't really know how to repay you, dear guests. If you should need any help in the future, Chao Ying Village will be there to lend you a hand. And the quest is complete. And also we have a... First let it load in. Spin Crystal 124. Yeah, there's quite a few new Spin Crystals. I only found like two so far, so... Yeah. Anyways, the quest is done. Complete Chen Yu's Blessings of Sunken Jade. A lovely quest, although I will criticize the auto dialogue in that one scene. Um, I could tell that they were trying to play the dialogue as you were moving in the raft, but I feel like they didn't account for how long it takes to read. Then again, if I'm right in the original Chinese, like the text would look smaller, so... Technically, it fits enough time, but when you localize the text, like, the text boxes get bigger, so... The dialogue gets bigger, I mean, so, yeah. Eh, I'll do some editing there to make it work. Um, but anyways, that was the main world quest of the area. I wonder what this, uh, what this is about. Hmm. Wait, I wonder what the... What the... Oh, here's this thing. I wonder what these are for. There might be a quest somewhere that uh, relates to it. Um, I think. I'll probably have to figure it out on my own time, but... Hmm. Yeah, upgrade the votive rain shade and carps rest to its maximum level. Could I find that real quick?
Oh, here you go. So she stoned and what she was gone. Vincent okay. Got some time spare when I go back and check. Okay, so I had to kind of look this up so um that there's like one more thing related to the quest. Because I was like wondering about the uh, carps rest and the uh, spirit carps and all that. And uh, I basically saw someone say you have to wait one in-game day to get it available. So make it available. So we have the quest. Oh, Ling Wan. Aya and Paimon, you're here. Huh? Wing on. Why are you over here? Because I can't get in. Can't get in? Uh, where can you get into? Carp's Rest, where Fujin is resting. Carp's Rest? Oh, you mean the place Fujin dragged us off to way back when? It is an abode sealed by her adeptal energy. I don't have her adeptal energy. Thus, I cannot go to her. Huh? But you didn't mention anything before she went back to rest. It escaped my mind. Do you need help? The adeptal energy you possess is sufficient to open the gate of Carp's rest. So yes, I need your help. Wait a sec, so you've been waiting here for us this whole time? Yeah, I was not waiting for you. I was looking for a way into Carp's Rest. That seems like pretty much the same thing too. Uh, anyway, we're a bit worried about Fujin's condition too. So why don't we go see her together? Fine, thank you both. Follow me. Okay, go to Carp's Rest. Alright. I get the invisible floor. Anyways. Um. This is a go up, but uh, how do we do that without having. There we go, okay. Um, okay. Here we go. We're in Carp's Rest. Technically below, but that's fine. Oh, here we are. So this was one of the last ones. Okay. <sighs> huh? Aya, Paimon, and Lingwon. Why did you all come here? Well, that's Fujin's voice. And it's coming from down below? Well, we were a little worried about you. Yeah, we're all worried about your health. So we just came here without giving you a heads up. You did the same thing to us first, so Paima thinks we're square now. Huh? Uh, sorry. When I returned here to rest, I think I forgot to unlock the entrance. I am so sorry. You came here to see me, but I made things harder for you instead. Oh, it wasn't much of a hassle, but why are you, uh, hiding in a puddle? Hmm, how should I put it? 
because I can't return to the form I prefer yet, and with you guys always seeing me in my carp form, I can't help but feel a bit embarrassed. You are aware that we've s we've already seen it many, many times, right? So there's no need to hide yourself, is there? <laughs> but before, I could turn back into human form whenever I wanted, so I thought moving around as a carp was just a matter of convenience. But now, all I have is this slick and slippery self, so I find it a bit... Oh, that's a bit stra bit of a strange thing to be so insistent about. But anyway, all that matters is that you're okay. The Ling Wong said that your adeptal energy wasn't consumed. It was just dispersed around the mountains, forests, and rivers of Chen Yu Vale. And that's why you've been weakened so much. So, if we were to collect the scattered adeptal energy, just like when we were finding the golden carp in Yao Di Va Valley, then you'd get better, right? Yes. At least in theory, that's correct, but... Right? Right? So if we see similar carp, we should just bring them back here. That way, it'll recover so much faster. That would be far too much trouble for you. My power's not yet that feeble. If I simply rest here for some time, it will be enough. It's not that much of a hassle. We'll just keep our eyes peeled if we run into any. Thank you, then. However, I really don't want to trouble you anymore on my behalf. You've already done so much for me. If the two of you should happen to find any more adeptal energy during your travels, please simply transfer it into the jade here. Though balance has been restored to the water and soil, if we can add more power to the rain jade, we can ensure, ensure favorable weather and prosperous years to come. And what about you? Really now? I already told you, all I need to do is rest here for a bit. Aya, Paimon, I really am quite grateful and quite happy that you came here to visit me. This is the first time anyone has come here since Herb Lord left. And thank you as well, Ling Wan. I have done nothing worthy of your thanks. Alright, enough of that. Then just think of it as me thanking you for bringing Aya and Paimon here. Really now. And lastly, let me say thank you once more, Aya and Paimon, for all you have done. Aww. Now we unlock the Rain Shade Oblation. So this is where we could put the Spirit Carps. Okay. 20 o'clock 40, you'll receive the votive rain jade's rev revelation, which will mark them on the map. Okay. Okay. I have 19. Let's go turn in what we have. Hey, so up to level 3. Okay. Oh, we can't see everything yet. Oh, we got one of these. Huh. Open it up. Oh, <laughs> voice line. Prosperities. A crown. Oh yeah, I don't think I ever said this, but I did triple crown a uh, hydro traveler at one point. So every element of traveler, as of you know, right now, is uh, triple crowned. And I still have so many crowns. Spin crystal one, two, three. Okay. And also, I think this is the perfect place to end things for, uh, for now. Oh, for this. I don't know. Words. Um, is there anything this way? Oh, whatever. I'll just stay here. Um, and close it off. <laughs> So yeah, that was the um, Chen Yu Vale World Quest. The main big one um, of the area. 
There is a lot of other world quests, but they're smaller. Well, somewhat smaller. They're kind of big, but not like as significant, I think. And also unlocking this uh, little feature of the area. And uh, I saw this one. I'll unlock it on my own time. Oh, I got an achievement. Okay, so get the things. Yeah, I just have to get that one and then I got all the teleports. Uh, yeah. Anyways, this has been a nice world quest. And, uh... I'm not sure what else to say, to be honest. Um, I always get lost with finding the correct words, so, um, I just keep it simple. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's fine. So, next time... Hmm. I think next time will be the main event of the update. Although those will be pre-recorded, um, not streamed live, so that'll be different. But, uh, yeah, that is technically next in terms of the videos. And, uh, yeah, I think that'll be it for now. So anyway, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all next time.